Okay, great. It seems I am recording. Okay. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the November 2021 virtual field trip to Chagrin River Park. My name is Michelle Brocious. I am your boardwalk leader this evening. I'm also a WCAS board member and field trip co-coordinator. A little bit about these virtual field trips in case you've never attended before. Every month I select a location to visit, usually um, an important bird area uh, that folks can visit independently of Audubon uh, with friends, family, or just by themselves to look for a couple of target species that I identify, visit the park, um, and then I ask that the folks that go and make the visit give something to me about their visit, usually a bird list, journaling, photography. I did receive a poem once, uh, art inspired by what, what was seen. And then I take those items and compile them into a digital scrapbook, this PowerPoint presentation that I then share on a follow-up call the second Wednesday of the following month. All right, so a little bit about Chagrin River Park. Chagrin River Park is owned and managed by Lake Metro Parks. This 237 acre park is located in a suburban area with access to approximately half mile of the Chagrin River, which Audubon, Ohio has designated as an important bird area. In addition, there are seasonal wetlands, second growth forests, managed grassland and scrub fields, which attract a variety of migrant and resident birds. The park is very accessible with approximately three miles of easy to walk trails. Um, in the spring, an excellent variety of migrating warblers, sparrows, thrushes, and other songbirds, rails, and shorebirds can be seen. In the summer, over 75 species of nesting birds, including yellow warblers, Baltimore and orchard orioles, spotted sandpiper, flycatchers, kingfishers, swallows, bobolinks, cuckoos, song and savannah sparrows, soar rail um, can be seen in the summer. And that is taken from the Ohio Ornithological Society's Birding in Ohio website the Chagrin River Park page. And on the left-hand side, a, a gorgeous photo of the Chagrin River uh, flowing through the park uh, taken by Sean Missig. And I don't always have two slides on the location, but there was much more to say about it. So in 1993, Lake Metro Parks acquired 101 acres along the Chagrin River located in the communities of East Lake and Willoughby. Most of the park's natural areas are made up of dense shrubs with pockets of mature forests bordering wetland areas. Archaeologist Charles Whittles Whittlesey found evidence of earthworks along the Chagrin River just downstream from this park. The site is named the Reeve Village site for the property owners, Dr. George and Reeve. People living here between 1250 and 1500 AD have been named the Whittlesey culture after the archaeologist. During several excavations, a variety of artifacts were found, including clay vessels, bird bone beads, projectile points, scrapers, and a large number of smoking or ceremonial pipes. These can now be seen at the Indian Museum of Lake County. Look for great blue herons, kingfishers, bank swallows, and sandpipers near the river. Two wetland areas support frogs, salamanders, and a variety of songbirds. The seasonal wetland near the picnic shelter serves as a haven for great blue heron and ducks such as mallards and blue winged teal. Parkland on the east and west bank of the Chagrin River are linked by a pedestrian bridge. Across is provided, access is provided to more than 2.83 miles of trails. And that is also from the Ohio Ornithological Society's website. Uh, and then a photo I took at the Chagrin River Park All right, first target species was the wild turkey. Uh, most North American kids learn turkey identification early by tracing outlines of their hands to make Thanksgiving cards. These big spectacular birds are an increasingly common sight the rest of the year too, as flocks stride around woods and clearings like miniature dinosaurs. Courting males puff themselves into feathery balls and fill the air with exuberant gobbling. The wild turkey's popularity at the table led to a drastic decline in numbers, but they have recovered and now occur in every state except Alaska. And that is from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology Wild Turkey webpage. And 
the wild turkey was unfortunately not sighted at Sugar River Park during the virtual field trip month. I think this is the first time this has happened to me <laughs> that no one has seen the target species. They were supposed to be there. Ebert said they've been there previous years in November. Uh, but for whatever reason, they were lying low this past November. Um, but I put in a picture of the wild turkey there um, in Holmes County by Tom Fishburn. And Tom, unfortunately, could not join us tonight. All right, uh, uh, the second target species, a white-throated sparrow, which was sighted in great numbers, I am pleased. They made up for the wild turkey not being there. All right, so crisp facial markings make the white-throated sparrow an attractive bird, as well as a hopping flying anatomy lesson. There's a black eye stripe, the white crown and the supercilium, the yellow lures, the white throat bordered by a black whisker or mallard stripe. They're also a great entree into the world of bird song and their pretty wavering whistle of Oh Sweet Canada. These forest sparrows breed mostly across Canada, but they're familiar winter birds across most of Eastern and Southern North America and California. The white throated sparrow comes in two color forms, white crowned and tan crowned. The two forms are genetically determined and they persist because individuals almost always mate with a bird of the opposite morph. Males of both color types prefer females with white stripes, but both kinds of females prefer tan stripe males. White stripe birds are more aggressive than tan stripe ones, and white stripe females may be able to outcompete their tan stripe sisters for tan striped males. So that's also from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, the white throated sparrow um, webpage. And then I included a picture there of the white throated sparrow at Chagrin River Park. All right, so first up is myself. So I visited the park on November 20th. Uh, there were so many birds that my visit to Chagrin River Park was a blur. I parked at the Erie Road entrance where I met my friend, Amy, and we made a beeline for the bridge to explore the Songbird Loop Trail. A full disclosure, my friend is very familiar with this park and dragged me around every which way that I tried my best using the Chagrin River Park map and Google Maps satellite view to piece my visit together afterwards. So uh, when I'm talking with you through how I went and where I went, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> pretty sure I'm accurate, but I can't be 100% sure. All right, so from what I remember, we took the Songbird Loop Trail to the north first. Here we happened upon a spot where seed had been left out for the birds. I want to point out that there are multiple signs posted at the park to not feed the wildlife. However, despite these rules, I saw plenty of evidence that people were engaging in this activity. One of my favorite wildlife photographers, Melissa Grew, speaks to the ethics of when it's okay or not to feed birds in an article she wrote for Audubon. Obviously, the property owner's rules should always be respected. But what about in cases where there is a choice? She provides some questions we can ask ourselves. Number one, is the species at risk? Number two, is the food appropriate and safely provided? Number three, is feeding this bird likely to change its behavior in harmful ways? An example that Melissa Group provides is of the Florida scrub jay, which is a species vulnerable to extinction. This bird species is one that adapts very well to being hand fed. While hand feeding birds can be a delightful experience when led by a park naturalist, engaging in this activity without considering ethical questions could have disastrous results. Studies have shown that Florida scrub jays fed by humans breed earlier in the season than birds that forage for their own meals and the chicks hatch before their main food source caterpillars are readily available. So that's um, obviously not a great thing to happen, especially to a bird that is already threatened. Um, all right, so back at Sugar River Park, uh, there were multiple species of birds foraging the scattered seed in the one spot. Dark-eyed juncos, white-breasted nuthatches, tufted titmice, white-throated sparrows, and black-capped chickadees were all present. And then I have a photo here of a dark-eyed junco at Chagrin River Park. Um, this picture, as well as the next several, are at the site where they were eating the seeds, and you will see evidence of um, the seeds scattered. So here is the white-breasted nuthatch at Chagrin River Park taking its turn. And I have this zoomed in. I was not this close to the birds. Uh, all right, tufted titmouse at Chagrin River Park by myself. Here's a white-throated sparrow at Chagrin River Park. 
another white-throated sparrow on the left, then a black-capped chickadee on the right. Um, the chickadee is up in the branches above the stump where the seed was, waiting its turn. All right, so we continued along to the west on the Songbird Loop Trail where we saw even more songbirds. This trail is very appropriately named. More of the same from the previous bend, but also house sparrow, red bellied woodpecker, and northern cardinal added to the mix. We also came across a gregarious white throated sparrow who didn't seem to mind our attention. In fact, the bird perched mere feet away from us and shared its sweet song. Uh, so here is a red bellied woodpecker at Chagrin River Park. This is a male. And you, you could tell because the red goes extends all the way to the beak. Females will have gray um, right there on their foreheads. And as you can see here on the left, I have a male red belly woodpecker and a female on the right. And you can see that gray, the gray forehead here with the red nape um, at Chagrin River Park. Here's a black capped chickadee at the park. Male house sparrow at Chagrin River Park. Female Northern Cardinal on the left and a female house sparrow on the right at Chagrin River Park. Tuft of Tit Mouse. And here's the singing, though backlit, white throated sparrow at Chagrin River Park. And then this is the same individual from the previous, and it's funny. So the sparrow is backlit here. I did the best I could to um, to bring down the shadows and, and to bring color back into the bird, but it still looks kind of you know dirty. It actually looks like a tan morph. And then you you go here, and it's a white morph. <laughs> so it's just interesting to see the difference that good light makes. That bird was up in the branches back and then flew to a better location with better light. Um, and I was able to capture these photos of the same bird and it looks a lot different. All right, the Songbird Loop Trail emptied out into a field at this point and we started walking toward a couple of transmission towers and a row of bluebird boxes. Funny enough, an Eastern bluebird was perched on a box just as if he were nesting. As this was late November, I knew it wasn't likely. We noticed the female perched on a nearby tower. So there's the male Eastern bluebird on the left on top of the bluebird box and female Eastern bluebird on the right at Chagrin River Park. We returned to the Songbird Loop Trail to finish the loop where we saw a flock of American goldfinch and vibrant male northern cardinals that popped against green stems. There were also more hatches and tit mice along the way as well. Here's the American goldfinch. And then here's the male northern cardinal. This is two, two different individuals in the same bush enjoying the berries. They were both chowing down. White breasted nut hatches at Chagrin River Park. Tufted tit mouse. This is the same individual. And these are the same as the last one as well, all the same bird. All right, Amy and I finished the loop and crossed the bridge to take the Bramble Side Loop Trail, which is mostly a grassland habitat. Here we saw a gorgeous American tree sparrow and a red-tailed hawk perched high on a transmission tower. So here's my American tree sparrow on the right. And then uh, two more pictures of that same sparrow at Chagrin River Park. And here's the red-tailed hawk high up in the tower. And here's my list. I, um, so I did 21 species. Notables include the red-tailed hawk, American tree sparrow, white-throated sparrow, and I saw a swamp sparrow as well. I just couldn't get a picture of it. And then a photo of a white-throated sparrow at Chagrin River Park.
All right, Sean is up next. Sean visited the park four times. Um, and I'm skipping over, I can't, with, with Zoom, the controls are right in front of this number of species flag that I have, so I can't, I can't see what everyone has. So I'm skipping that and just, you know, announcing at the end, but I hope you can all see it. If not, then I'll have to move my template around a little. All oh, right, God. so Sean visited the park four times. Uh, Chagrin for Park is one of my absolute favorite places to go. From the many paths to walk to the abundant wildlife, this park never disappoints. Walking at Chagrin River Park helped me to get through the chaos of 2020 and also helped make 2021 an even better year. This place will always hold a special place in my heart. My first visit was on 11-2. I took the day off of work, and even if I found nothing that day, it was still way better than a day at the office. Thankfully, Chagrin River Park delivered as it always does, and I had a great trip. After I had parked, the robins were the first ones that I saw. Next, the Blue Jays followed and made their calls to alert everyone that they were there. From the parking lot off, Re off of Reeves Road, I started up the central path that heads towards the field. As I was walking, there was plenty of movement on both sides of the path. I noticed a smaller bird within the mix and focused my attention on that. I was happy that I did as it turned out to be a brown creeper. I then made my way towards the field. I found many birds within the brush on the sides of the path near the wetland area. Notable species I saw were white-throated sparrow, white-crowned sparrow, golden-crowned kinglet, and a fox sparrow. So there's a picture of the brown creeper at Chagrin River Park by Sean Missig. Now two more photos here, white-crowned sparrow on the left and white-throated sparrow on the right at Chagrin River Park by Sean Missig. All right, I checked the field for raptors, but did not find any. I continued to walk the perimeter trail and walked up all the connecting paths in between. I spotted many of the resident birds as I walked these trails and enjoyed their company. They have followed me on these trails many times throughout the past two years. November 6th was my second visit and was also the best. I got out early and met up with a friend for a frosty visit to the park. This was the first major frost of the year and it was spectacular. The frost covered landscape and beaming sunlight really set, set the tone for the day and it was a great one. For the temperature being as cold as it was, it did not stop the birds from being very active. We started our journey on the path that follows the Chagrin River and crossed the bridge toward the Erie Road parking lot where we walked the small loop to the left of the bridge. This path was new to me and I enjoyed every part of it. One of the first highlights was a herring gull standing on a rock in the river. I had a few small windows through the brush to get a shot of this bird and thankfully I got it. So here's a photo of the herring gull at Chagrin River Park by Sean Sig. As we continued, we encountered many of the resident birds, including robin, blue jay, crow, goldfinch, morning dove, titmouse, and starling. Once we reached the area by the overlook, we retreated to the second highlight of the visit. There were a few Carolina wren bouncing around within the trees and shrubs nearby. I love taking pictures of these little birds, but they usually do not sit still, and photographing them can be difficult. I was ready, though. I pressed the shutter button and didn't let go. Out of the series of shots, I was lucky enough to have captured two Carolina wren rather close to each other before they flew off. As we made our way back across the river, we followed the path that loops around the field. It wasn't until we made it back to the central paths that we started to see more wildlife. Near the playground and parking lot off of Rural Drive, we spotted a pileated woodpecker. I have seen pileated many times at this park, and they are usually on the Rural Drive side and not by the entrance on Reeves. They are always a treat to see and listen to with their calls being rather loud and unique. Uh, here is the picture of the Carolina Run pair at Chagrin River Park by Sean Sig. Two photos here, American Robin on the left and Morning Dove on the right at Chagrin River Park by Sean Sig. All right, as we continued, we did see some dark eyed juncos and a northern flicker made an appearance as well. The last part of our journey took us to the large open field where I happened to find an American kestrel. I had seen it fly through as we were walking to the opening and caught it hovering in the air. 
It spotted me taking pictures of it and it landed high up on the tower for the electrical lines running through there. This is the only, uh, this is only the second time I've seen an American Kestrel and each time it has been by electrical towers. I was able to get some shots of the bird, but the moment I briefly looked away, it was gone. This was a wonderful way to end the day. All right, my visit on 11-14 was fairly similar to the last two trips. I spotted the American Kestrel again, but was not able to get any more pictures as I only saw it flying through the area and could not find it later. All of the birds I normally see there were out in force again, and it made for another great visit. There was one blue jay that really made this visit special, though. It posed very nicely for me by the opening to the field. Most blue jay I have encountered do not like getting their picture taken, and they usually aren't patient birds either. So this one sitting nicely for me was a pleasant surprise. So there's the American Kestrel at Sugar and River Park by Sean Missig. And then here is that beautiful blue jay that Sean was talking about at Sugar and River Park. It's posing very nicely. At the end of my visit, I did find a northern flicker that flew into the area but stayed perched very high in a dead tree. It made calls from time to time, but no other birds joined it or called back. Thankfully, I was able to get a few shots before I left. My last visit was on Thanksgiving, 1125. And I, you know, I thought about going on Thanksgiving as well, um, but I, did, I couldn't brave the rain. You braved the rain, Sean, I'm impressed. Anyways, uh, my last visit was on Thanksgiving and this was an interesting one. This time I met up with another friend, but both of us, but both, I'm sorry. This time I met up with another friend for both of us to get some photography in. We succeed, but only for about an hour. After that hour, it started raining a little harder than we would have liked for having our equipment out. So we put our cameras away and continued walking. We saw the same birds I had seen previously, but this time a gray capper made an appearance. Surprisingly, I did not see one on any of my other trips in November. Despite the weather being bad, this was still an enjoyable trip and a great way to spend my holiday. In the spirit of Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for WCAS and the virtual field trip program. I have learned new areas, new bird species, new photography skills, and met truly wonderful people along the way. Thank you to all of you for being a part of my journey. And that is such a nice sentiment. Thank you for sharing that, Sean. And here's a photo of a Northern Flicker at Chagrin River Park. And then two photos of a Northern Cardinal at Chagrin River Park by Sean Missig. red belly woodpecker and female northern cardinal on the left and male northern cardinal on the right at Chagrin River Park. Another male northern cardinal on the left and a female on the right at Chagrin River Park by Sean Missig. White-breasted nut hatches at Chagrin River Park by Sean Missig. And there's a picture of Sean. Uh, so Sean Missick taking photos at Sugar River Park by Nick Crow. And that's his friend that went along with him. Um, here is Sean's bird list, a total of 25 species. Very well done. And notables include white-throated sparrow, white-crowned sparrow, fox sparrow, brown creeper, Carolina wren, pileated woodpecker, and American kestrel. All right, Al Rand is up next. He visited the park on November 26th. So he says, I visited Sugar River Park on 1126. It was a cold and windy day, which kept the birds to a minimum. I walked about 2.5 miles around the park and came across little pockets of birds here and there, sparrows, robins, jays, juncos, all the usual suspects. The highlight for me was an American kestrel. It perched up nicely, but didn't stick around long enough for me to get any close-up pictures. While in between the pockets, I stopped to admire the snowflakes that were falling. I put snowflakes in quotes because they reminded me more of sugary confections one would find on cupcakes or something rather than a form of precipitation. They were not the delicate flakes of winter, but still held the characteristic shape. There on the right there is a photo of an American kestrel at Sugar and River Park by Al Rand. And then here's the snowflakes, the sugary confections um, at Sugar and River Park by Al Rand. 
While walking around, I couldn't help but notice all the Phragmites. Phragmites is the genus name for common reed grass. Although invasive, data suggests it's a native species. The agreed upon reason for its invasiveness is that the native variety may have hybridized with the European variety, making it more aggressive. This fast spreading grass, which can grow to be 10 to 15 feet tall, chokes out other wetland plants and eventually takes over. I've yet to see it harbor any birds. It appears that the landowners attempted to cut it back in some areas, but from what I've read, the most effective removal strategy is to uproot it altogether. Herbicidal treatments work, think mentor marsh, but it's costly and needs to be controlled. Sadly, invasive species, which is a term that does not apply to all non-native species, are showing up more and more. Two other invasives I see all over the place are garlic mustard and lesser celandine. celandine. Responsible folks who know which species are invasive are encouraged to pull up what they can. You may have seen Trample garlic mustard in the middle of the Rocky River Nature Center trails. Just be cautious of your surroundings because I got poison ivy more than once this year. I totaled 15 species during my time at Chagrin River Park. And then on the left, a photo of the Phragmites at Chagrin River Park by Al Rand. And here's his 15, a list of 15. Notables include red-tailed hawk, the American kestrel, and he did get the white-throated sparrow and a close-up of a Phragmite at Chagrin River Park by Al Rand. All right, next up is Lisa Gerbic. Uh, Lisa, you are on the call. Did you want to take your slides or do you want me to read them? Most people have me read them, so it's okay if you want me to. Yeah, go ahead, you can read it. <laughs> or you can chat to me, tell me what you wanna do. You can go ahead and read it. Well, I couldn't, I, I couldn't hear you, but I think you were probably telling me to, to go ahead. <laughs> All right, so Lisa visit, okay, good. <laughs> Lisa visited the park two times. And she says, I always enjoy a trip to Chagrin River Park. I love hearing and seeing Easter meadowlarks at this location in the spring and summer. For this field trip, I visited on November 13th and 24th. Many people here like to hand feed the birds and leave seed out for the wildlife. When I first arrived, a woman was hand feeding black capped chickadees, tufted tit mice, and white breasted nut hatches. As I traveled my route, I watched a white breasted nut hatch hide a seed under the tree bark. I noticed a huge bald faced hornet nest in a nearby tree. Walking the trails, I saw many northern cardinals and blue jays. At one point, I stopped to watch a red bellied woodpecker looking for a snack on the underside of a branch. I noticed many white-tailed deer along the trails, white-throated sparrows and American tree sparrows were along the path in certain sections of the park. I cut my first trip short because it started raining and I didn't want to get the camera wet. And on the right-hand side, a beautiful photo of a white-breasted on hatch hiding that seed under the bark at Chagrin River Park by Lisa Gerbic. And two more photos here, red-bellied woodpecker on the left and white-throated sparrow on the right at Chagrin River Park by Lisa Gerbic. I love the way that sparrow is like tilting its head. It's very cute. All right, two more photos. Tufted titmouse on the left and American tree sparrow on the right at Chagrin River Park by Lisa. That's a fantastic close-up of, of the tufted titmouse. All right, white-tailed deer on the left and a chipmunk on the right at Chagrin River Park. I love that chipmunk's cheeks. Look at those cheeks, they're so cute. All right, on my second trip, I observed a downy woodpecker pecking at some dead stalks, hoping to find something inside to eat. I was lucky enough to get a quick look at a fox sparrow that was in a bush with a bunch of house sparrows. As I was taking photos of an American tree sparrow, I noticed a, large, a larger bird also on the frozen pond working its way along the logs. I was thrilled to spot a rusty blackbird. Next, I came across an Eastern chipmunk with very full cheek pouches oh, that was on the, the previous slide. I saw Carolina wrens in a couple of different areas. Unfortunately, I did not spot a wild turkey on either of these trips. All right, so uh, that rusty blackbird on the left 
and Fox Sparrow on the right at Chagrin River Park by Lisa Gerbeck. Two fantastic birds to have sighted. Here's a, a hornet's nest on the left. I love that trail scene in the middle there. It's very picturesque. And Donnie Woodpecker on the right at Chagrin River Park by Lisa Gerbeck. Here's Lisa's bird list, 28 species. That's fantastic. Uh, notables that I picked out, Cooper's Hawk, Carolina Wren, American Tree Sparrow, White-Throated Sparrow, Fox Sparrow, and the Rusty Blackbird. And then a Carolina Wren there um, on the left-hand side of the screen at Chagrin River Park by Lisa Gerbeck. Okay, and that's the end. Thank you everyone very much for visiting. A, a thank you to Sean Missig, Al Rand, and Lisa Gerbic, and a huge thank you to Lake Metro Parks for Chagrin River Park. There are three entrances. I, I went to the Erie Road entrance. GPS took me right there. I'm sure finding the other two are just as easy. Uh, please visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. Uh, this month, the month of December, we are visiting the um, now I'm blanking, Euclid, Euclid Creek Reservation. Um, I've already made one of my visits. I had some good luck, at least with mergansers. I didn't see any belted kingfishers. Um, the belted kingfisher and, and mergansers are the two target species. I know Sean went and saw some belted kingfishers. So at least I know pretty early in the month that we have the target species covered. It's not gonna be a repeat of November where we didn't see any turkey. All right, and so with that, I would like to open it up for discussion. If you have any questions, comments, you could take yourself off mute or type them into the chat. And I will, I will read your um, messages aloud. Oh, Lisa says that she likes Sean's pictures of the two Carolina runs. That was a really cute picture. I, that's outstanding that he got them both together for sure. Yeah, that was... Uh... That was a lot of patience. I, I had to sit there and just kind of wait. Everyone's wait having trouble with wait. audio today. Any other comments? Looking at the chat. I thought I saw Nancy typing. Okay, I'll wait. All right. Nancy says, thank you all for going out to Sugar and River Park. I did not go on a virtual trip in November. That's okay. We can't, you know, we can't all make them all. Um, Tom couldn't make it out either. Um, hopefully coming up, Nancy, I'll have a few more out your way. A little easier for you to get to. All right. And that's it for this evening then, if there's no further comments. So thank you very much for attending the call and um, I hope that you all can make it out to Euclid Creek Reservation or if not a, a virtual field trip in the future and I hope to see you all next month. Have a, a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays everyone.